So we have a school of 50 students and 20 of them purchase food from the canteen every day. We would say that the population size is 50 and that the population proportion of canteen purchases is 0.4. But say we want to estimate the number of students who purchase from the canteen without asking the entire population. We could ask 10 random students and I can see that three of them purchase from the canteen. So I would say that the sample proportion is 0.3. Although the sample proportion isn't correct, it's a fairly decent estimate of the true population proportion. We take a sample proportion and use it as an estimation for the true population proportion because often the challenge is we don't know the population proportion. And you might ask, why not just ask the entire population so we can just find out the actual population proportion? Wouldn't this save us the stuffing around for taking a sample proportion and estimating in the first place? And unfortunately, the answer to that question is that asking the entire population often isn't feasible. Either way, some interesting questions arise. The first one is, how accurate is a sample proportion? And the second one is, how might we improve the accuracy of the sample proportion? To answer these questions, I'm going to run a simulation about the canteen purchasing situation. I'm going to take a random sample of 5 from the population of 50. I'm going to record the sample proportion, that is, the average hit rate, and place the result into a histogram. I'll then iterate this process again and again, and I'll set up a loop to take some samples. Keeping the first question in mind, how accurate is the sample proportion? We can see that the more samples we take, the more likely it is that the population proportion is around the sample proportion with the most outcomes. Now, I'm going to repeat this sampling process for samples of 10 students. Watch it play out. The sample proportion of 0.4 will be the most likely occurrence after many iterations. After seeing these two simulations, we can make an observation about the shape of the distributions. Notice it's in the shape of a normal distribution. It seems that the larger the sample size, the closer the distribution of these sample proportions will match the shape of a normal distribution. Let me make it super obvious. I'll place side by side samples of 3 and samples of 20. Repeating my comment from just before, the larger the sample size, the closer the distribution of these sample proportions will match the shape of a normal distribution. Now, let's backpedal to the two original questions proposed. How accurate is the sample proportion and how might we improve the accuracy of the sample proportion? To answer the first one, I would say that the accuracy of the sample proportion is dependent on the size of the sample. A larger sample seems to yield a more accurate sample proportion. The answer to the first question implicitly answers the second question. Improve the accuracy of the sample proportion by taking a larger sample size. As a bonus remark, I want to introduce to you a theorem that has quietly been sitting in the corner of each animation. It's called the Central Limit Theorem. Looking at sample sizes of 10, we can calculate the sample proportion. However, if we take repeated samples and take an average of the sample proportions, kind of like an average of the averages, after hundreds of trials, this average of averages will eventually approach the true value of the population proportion. In this case, a sample proportion of 0.4 is a possible value and we can see after repeated sampling that the average of averages will approach 0.4. However, notice this is the case even when the sample proportion of 0.4 isn't a possible outcome. Look at samples of 3. The shape of the sampling proportion distribution won't approach an acceptable normal distribution. However, Notice the average of the averages will approach the value of the population proportion. With all that said, let's go whiteboard some examples. So what we have here is information about samples and populations. And what we have is we've got a population standard deviation and we've got a sample deviation. And we've also just got notation, right? When we see a hat on top of the P, Really, it's just implying that it is a sample proportion uh, rather than a population proportion. Okay, now in order, and again, we use sampling to estimate populations. Okay, we take a sample and we see what sort of an estimation does it give about the population. Now, we saw with our 
sampling distributions that they sort of approach a normal distribution. Okay, and there's two things that need to be satisfied. Okay, number one and number two, in order to say that our sampling distribution would approximate a normal distribution, and it's that n times p must be greater than or equal to 10, and n times q, or q is equal to 1 minus p, okay, it's the probability of failure, uh, that would be to approximate the a normal distribution. So those two must be satisfied, okay, otherwise we say it, it would not be an acceptable approximation of a normal distribution. And now there's a third thing, there's a third thing which really doesn't <coughs> And now there's a third thing here, which is that a 10n has got to be less than or equal to n, where I guess this small n, the small n is the sample size, and large n is the population size. And really what that's saying is, is that we can only take a 10% of the population size as a sample size. Okay, and really this is because, well, I've just got a little, I guess I've just got a little sentence here, is that because of the independent events, right, we shouldn't pick out more than 10% of the population without replacement, because uh, that's going to challenge the concept of sampling participants as a dependent probable events uh, rather than independent probable events. So really it's saying if we're picking out more than 10% of the population, we're challenging the concept that our samples are not independent events, uh, and that is going to screw things up for us a little bit, so we've just got to make sure that that box gets ticked to make sure that we are taking an appropriate sample size. Okay, so we can see with all three of the cases is that as our sample size gets larger, the standard deviation gets smaller. And that really, that should make sense because in our in our formula, in our formula, if I zoom up in here again, uh, n is on our denominator. And so really this expression is inversely proportional uh, for n, which means that as n gets bigger, uh, this expression is going to get smaller uh, because it's on the denominator. Uh, so that should make sense. Okay, so if we're getting into examples here, uh, we can have consider the population size of 4,000 and a sample of 80. Now, p hat, it was found that p hat was 0 0.2. Uh, would the sample size be large enough to approximate a normal distribution? Uh, well, first of all, we need to satisfy a couple of things. Okay, and so we can see that we've satisfied all of our properties here. Okay, this one and this one in particular is for approximating a normal distribution. And this property here is just saying that we have taken a sample size which is large enough to approximate a normal distribution, tick and tick, uh, but it's an appropriate sample size such that it's less than 10% of the true uh, population. So that is nice. So I would say it's an appropriate sample size and it is large enough to approximate a normal distribution. Getting a little trickier, we've got the population size of a gaming community is $2,000. From a random sample of 150, 84 eat McDonald's on a weekly basis. Okay, and so I would include myself in this gaming community and I'm definitely one of the 84 who would eat Maccas on a weekly basis. Anyway, calculate the sample proportion, state if it's large enough to approximate normal distribution, calculate standard deviation, and then we're gonna draw, draw this distribution and make a comment. So let's get to some of those. Okay, so first part here, I would get the p hat is equal to 56 because that's sort of like the average. So I, I, I selected 84 out of 150, and so that's 56% of people uh, in this community eat Maccas on a weekly basis. And so if I'm going to state if the sample size is large enough, I need to satisfy my three properties. Okay, and so I can see for at least those three cases, right, case one, case two, and case three, I'm going to satisfy those where I need to satisfy these two to approximate a normal distribution. I so say that's great, but I've also got to check that I am not taking more than 10% of the population. Uh, otherwise, it is not an appropriate sample size. So I've done all three of those things. So I would say, yep, uh, and then I need to make a statement. I would say, therefore, yes, the sample size is large enough. Okay, I can go ahead and calculate the standard deviation of my distribution. Okay, and I get that, just plug it in a calculator, I would get that 
my uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 0.04 and I can I can draw this distribution because I know that it's going to approach a normal distribution. Okay, so that is the distribution drawn. And if I was going to make a comment about this, remember, this is a distribution. This is a distribution of the sampling proportions. So even though, even though it is not the true population proportion, you'd say that you're fairly confident, okay? You'd probably say you're fairly confident that the true population proportion uh, isn't 44%, for example. You'd probably say that it's actually most likely that it's going to be, that it's going to be a 56%. You'd say that is a most likely. So I'm just going to get it down in writing. So I'd say, I'd say, as a, as a comment of this distribution, I'd say it, I would be fairly confident, I'd be fairly confident that the true population proportion would be in this section here. I'd say I'm fairly confident about that. Okay, and so the correct interpretation is that you'd say it's reasonable to conclude that roughly about 48 to 64% of people from the gaming community uh, eat Maccas on a weekly basis. Okay, that would be the nice, correct interpretation.